He also does really weird stuff, right? So this is just a knife. Put it on ice, doesn't do much. Put it on. And that's just caused by the evaporation of the carbon dioxide. Okay, so here I have some water ice and some dry ice who's hovering a little. Let's see if we can convince him to stay still. That's basically what's on the pole of planet Earth and planet Mars. So dry ice is actually a lot colder than regular ice. This, this is at about minus 80 degrees Celsius, whereas this is at freezing point, which is zero degrees Celsius. There are other differences between uh, these two molecules, most notably density. Water ice actually floats in water, whereas dry ice sinks in water. And the reason for this is, is very simple. Um, these molecules are about on the same size. So water is H2O and carbon dioxide is carbon dioxide. Reds are oxygen, obviously. Uh, and the, if you were to equate these things to balls, they're about the same size ball. The carbon dioxide is a bit bigger, but they're about the same size. And what you've actually got in the solid here is essentially a ball pit of those balls. All those balls are as close together as they can. So in terms of number of molecules per unit volume, they're actually fairly comparable. The main difference, of course, is that this only has one heavy atom in it, while this has three heavy atoms in it. So if they were exactly the same size ball, you'd expect carbon dioxide to be about three times the density of water, when in reality, it's, it's a bit bigger. So this is about twice as dense as water. So, this is the question. If I were to take equal masses of these two and put them into water, which would provide the better cooling? Now, you might immediately think carbon dioxide. Or you might immediately think not carbon dioxide, because when you put carbon dioxide into water, how much of that cold is actually going into the water? So this is at minus 78 degrees Celsius, and this one's at zero. Right, now I've done some ballpark calculations, I've got my own opinions of where this is going to lie, but I want you to actually have a guess as to how much it'll actually cool down the glasses relatively. So what we need is to get equal masses of these two into these two glasses. Carbon dioxide, by the way, gives you frostbite if you hold on to it for more than a couple of seconds. So you've got to be fairly, fairly quick with all of this. Okay, that's seven and a half grams. So we're going to seven and a half grams of water. We'll be, we'll be, we'll be good to go. Right. So we're going to go for that. That's eight grams of that versus seven and a half grams of that. So it, it's very comparable amounts. Okay. So over on this side, I've got the thermal camera all looking at it. Actually, we we can trim that down even more. We can do half a gram. That'd be enough. Okay, whatever. Eight grams. Seven and a half. And in they go. So, this is one of my suspicions, is that an awful lot of the cold comes out in the gas there. Um, but, we will see. Um, whereas, of course, with the ice, uh, it's, it's going to melt entirely into the liquid. So what's actually providing most of the cooling here isn't so much how cold it was when it went in, but when it changes from liquid to gas, it, that's when it sucks in most of the energy. Whereas, of course, when water changes from solid to liquid, that's when it sucks in most of its energy. It really is just blow some very convincing smoke rings, does the carbon dioxide. To get that on the slow motion camera. But anyway, to the main event, what does it look like in the infrared? Now, first thing you'll remember is with the infrared, the lighter the color, the hotter it is. And the darker the color, the cooler it is. So you can see that on the bench surface where I've been handling solid carbon dioxide and water ice, it's very dark because it's cold. And also you can see some reflections in the glasses because of that. Nonetheless, the glasses basically reflect their temperature. On a non-reflective portion of the glass, you can actually see the temperature 
more or less of the glass. So at the beginning of the experiment, you can see that both glasses are at about 22 degrees Celsius. Then if you look later, you can actually see when it stirred the reflection of the ice cube in the water. You can also see that the carbon dioxide is cooling down all of the top of the glass as that colder gas is coming out. That you can even see when the ice cube rolls gently around that leaves a nice cool streak on the glass. So for the first part of the experiment, they very much match each other in terms of their rate of cooling. But the ice actually melts much quicker than the carbon dioxide evaporates off. So what you find is towards the end of the experiment, the carbon dioxide keeps on cooling, whereas the ice doesn't. To the point where the final temperatures is the water is at about 18 degrees, carbon dioxide is at about 17 degrees. Which means the ice cooled it by about 4 degrees, whereas the dry ice cooled it by about 5 degrees. Which, which when you think about it is kind of crazy that one of these is at 0 degrees Celsius, whereas the other is at minus 80. And they almost give exactly the same cooling when you put them in water. So as I suggested earlier, this thing does a pretty decent Gandalf impression in terms of blowing smoke rings. Not entirely sure how that works, but that's what they look like in slow motion. And also, this has one last surprise for us. And that's, remember what I was saying at the beginning, that carbon dioxide is denser than water. It sinks in water. That's until the last little bit of carbon dioxide, which always floats to the surface and does something like this. <laughs> 